Okay, this is about take 57. Um, I wanted to start the recall um, workshop, online workshop, with a bit of a talk about the philosophy of modern dog training and how it relates to creating a good recall. If we are at all punishing to our dogs, if we don't offer the right type of reinforcement, if we aren't noticing what our dogs actually enjoy, and if we aren't being the source of all good things to our dogs, we're limiting our ability for the recall to be successful. And I've found that some dogs will come no matter how grumpy you sound because of fear of consequence. But basically, those dogs are a ticking time bomb and sooner or later they're going to weigh it up. Is it worthwhile coming or is it not? If we're just relying on grumpy voice to get them to do what we want. Um, and it's not good for you, you know, your relationship with yourself even to be constantly down on your dog. <clears throat> it makes you feel like a bad human and you can't blame your dog forever for everything when really they are just a organism within an environment that's responding to the environment around them. So the three things that we need to take into consideration with um, recall are what does your dog find reinforcing? And are we setting them up to succeed in the learning stages? And how we are going to use what they find reinforcing to get what we want, which is for them to zip back to us. And the other part of this is understanding that there's a difference between a casual, hey pup, come over here, type recall to a oh my god you better come here your life depends on an emergency recall which is we're going to be teaching both and one's you know one for when your dog's not too far away and you just want them to check in on you and find you relevant and the other one is possibly when they're at a distance or they're focusing on something else and you want to disengage them and I think that the biggest understanding that we all need to have is when to use either of them and not to overdo the emergency one at all so it doesn't become like oh that again I know what happens and you know that's not that reinforcing to me today so I won't bother because this wallaby scent that I just found is so cool I want to chase that instead because I've played frisbee three times today and I don't want to play frisbee, I want to chase wallabies. If we keep the reinforcement, you know, high value um, and always their choice. And you'll see in a little film that I made just before I sat down here with Hiccup and how his high value reinforcer, which used to be one thing, has now morphed into what I really want it to be, which is playing with me. So, and I had to use something that I didn't want to use as a reinforcer one running away from me and the other one was playing with your lead rope and I hate that I hate the fact that he used to grab his lead rope as a default behavior of when he got anxious and thrash around on it like a nut but what I've found is he has an outlet for that now and he only does it in that context and um, in conjunction with teaching him drop it leave it and um, reinforcing what I do want he has stopped doing the lead grabbing in everyday life and he only does it as reinforcement now for the emergency recall, which I find really, really exciting that he has made that correlation and taken that and ran with it. But today was a turning point because I had his high value toys with me, which I had to actually sit on the fence to get him to actually concentrate on to do the thing that I wanted him to do. Um, which I spent years getting him not to do, but now I can put it on cue and he does it and it's, and he knows there's an end to it. He can stop when it's time to stop. Um, yeah, and I had sat his toys up high on a fence and at the end of the film you saw him run over and he sniffed the ground then he realised they were up high and he found them and he said, please play with those instead. I don't want to do the other thing anymore. I just want you and that game, please. And that's what we want. We want dogs choosing their reinforcement and if we make their reinforcement contingent on us and high value they make the right choices yay yeah so the other thing too is is that you know when I first started training with food if the dog didn't do what I wanted 
I would withhold that food um, and I wouldn't um, give them a treat if they didn't sit. And now if I ask for a sit, you know, I won't mark them not sitting. I won't click or say yes. Um, but I will definitely just give them a piece of food just to re-engage with them to say, hey, you know, are you still there? Are you okay? Can you eat? You have this anyway. And what I've found is, is if you do that and you keep the conversation open about reinforcement and about, um, and about that it's there, you, and if you click when the behavior happens, the behavior increases regardless of whether they've got free food for not sitting um, or not. It's an interesting one, but it's just the difference between just giving it to them and marking what you want. Dogs aren't stupid. They know that the mark means that's the thing we want, whether they're getting fed in between the marks or not. Um, it's really, um, science of dog training has got to a stage now where we're trying to encourage um, clients to enter the realms of errorless learning and errorless learning means that the dog can't do anything wrong because for the dog there is no wrong so withholding food just creates frustration and when you see with hiccup that if I withhold his toy or if I withhold anything from him he gets so frustrated and he barks and barks and barks and barks and barks and sometimes we get caught in a bit of a trap and we go nah, ah, ah, if they bark while we're teaching them but that's not a way of diminishing barking diminishing barking happens when we up our rate of reinforcement and expect less and reward more um, and then they aren't frustrated so the bark doesn't happen so anyway, that's a bit of a side note, but it's exactly the same in recall. We wouldn't want to just um, reinforce for the dog running towards us. We wouldn't want to mark then. We would mark for an ear flick. We would mark for them glancing at us. We would mark for an orientation towards us, the whole body, if they did that straight away. But if they're really distracted and they're not looking at us and they do that towards us, that's a marking moment. And that is... Um, where we're going to start. Um, so your homework for today is to develop a list of um, motivators for your dog. I want you to have three, you know, favourite food, favourite game, and maybe an external um, environmental motivator, like the ability to run somewhere um, and chase something that, you know, they want to get to, but they can't cause harm to if they do go there. Um, I'm trying to think of an example of that with Hiccup, it is chasing plovers because he can't catch them and he can't get out of the paddock. So I use those as um, an external reinforcer. He looks at me, he sits, I go get to birdies and he runs after them and then I do my emergency recall and he bolts back to me. So the recall, the emergency recall becomes part of that whole picture of chasing birds. So it actually becomes a stronger thing. Um, but not all of you would have the ability to practice that because of, you know, lack of fencing, no external motivators or ones that are just too risky to use. Um, the other thing is to know that if you let your dog off in the environment all the time without a lead attached, um, you are teaching your dog to run off. Um, Hiccup does spend a lot of time on a long lead he's dragging it around he's running around with it if I'm doing something like going through the bush I take it off if we're away from the road I take it off if we're away from cows I take it off if we're away from sheep I take it off um, if we're in the enclosed training yard and we're doing agility or um, something else we take it off but for everything else because um, you know I can't control the universe around me oh, shame that um, I leave it on as a safety net and he doesn't know the difference between having that dragging and not having it dragging. I'm just consciously aware of when I use it high speed that there isn't anything that he can hook it on and break his neck um, or get it hooked on and, um, you know, hurt himself in any way. But, you know, there is a bit of a risk in that. But I do, I'm very aware of it. Every time we go outside, I'm thinking, okay, are you going to get that hooked on that stick? What are you doing there? Are you Are going too close to that thing? You know, anything like that. Um... And the other thing I want you to think about is um, how many fenced areas you can get access to in this strange new time that we're living in where your dog can practice on his long light lead but not have any way of getting out. So you don't have that underlying fear of losing your dog. So think about um, motivators. 
think about where you can practice this get yourself a long lead you know five meters and if you check the file section there's a book in there really reliable recall I don't stick to that as a rule I jiggle around that protocol but I find it's a really nice one to put I don't want you to print it off or um, you know to follow it to a T if you don't feel like you want to but it's there if you need it just to have a little read because you the I, I got a few ideas from her but I don't follow it to it um, to a particular standard it's just ideas from it which I thought well that makes perfect sense to me so just recapping in my head so I think that you've got everything that I want you to have at the end of your first lesson is and I'll pop a little list in the file section too I want you to think about motivators I want you to think about environment where you can go I want you to think about how um, rewarding you are as a person and what games you can play um, and I think that's pretty well it yeah any questions please pop it below I've gone on for 11 minutes I might have to do this again and shorten it down anyway thanks so much and I'll look forward to hearing how you get on with your first lesson thanks bye